If you're looking for a tool to make your lessons more engaging where perhaps students can answer questions using their smartphones or perhaps using their computers or their tablets or they could do the same online so if you want to make your online sessions more engaging you really might like the tool that I'm going to show you now because it has lots of different question types it's free really easy to set up and I was uh, lucky enough to be at a presentation the other day and I was taken through a training session using this technology I was so impressed that I started using it straight away and I'm actually showing you this technology only after two days of myself using it. However, I have been well trained and I can take you through everything that I learned. I think you're really going to like this tool. Great for engagement, great for checking understanding. You can use it either live or you can use it for homework when students could go home and complete the activities at home. One of the good things is it's free or two good things. One, it's free. Number two, the variety of questions that are available. Really hope you like the video. Let's get into it. If you do, please like my videos, please share them with other teachers. Love to know your comments and what you think of this tool. And of course, don't forget to sign up to my YouTube channel. Let's get started. So the technology we're talking about is called WooClap. You will need to sign in. You can sign in using Microsoft Teams or Google or just create an account the way that I did. Once you're signed into the free account, all you need to do is click on WooClap and you create events. Now, when you create an event, you can have up to two questions in that event. And it's really easy to do. You literally create an event by just giving it a name. And then, for example, if I clicked on this one here, you'll see this particular event has only got one question. I am actually allowed to put two questions. Now, the great thing about WooClap is the question types. Look at all these questions that you've got. Multiple choice, poll, word cloud, open question, label, matching, very good, brainstorming. Absolutely love that brainstorming one. I've already used that. Rating I've already used as well. And also there's one more down here I've already used and that is sorting. Now what I like is that variety of activities that you can get the students involved in and the way it works is so easy once you've created the event and that's just simply to give the event a name and then add the questions to that event you click on the start button the students can either use this QR code and log straight in and answer the questions or they can you can copy that link for example and share it in zoom or share it in Microsoft Teams or in Google Meet and the students can access the activity and answer the questions and the data immediately comes back to you. Now I'm actually going to show you this in action now so you can see how effective and how easy it is to use. So let me take you through the process. So once you've created an event, let's imagine you want to start to do that event with your students. And I've got a very simple one here that I've created. Just click on the event that you want to start. Now the best thing to do is to click on the start button first, this first button, because what you want to do is make sure that the students can either access using their smartphones or they can just copy that link. Now, once they've all logged in, click on this button so that the game actually starts. Now, in this particular one that I've done, all the students need to do is to put in order which of these technologies do they think is the most popular. So let's quickly look at what the students see. So I'm just going to jump back and copy this link. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in on another web, on another web browser so that I can log in as a student and actually answer the question. So now you can see what the students see, and the idea here is that they, it says, which of these sites is the most popular on my website? Uh, put them in order. So it's basically about which of the videos has been the most popular this year on my website, and then the students can decide on the order that they think uh, is the correct answer. And then once they've done that, once they've put their answers in, they simply click on submit, and those answers are immediately submitted back to the teacher. Now, one of the reasons why I like WooClap so much is the variety of questions. Let's just jump back to the teacher's site again and see what the teacher sees and then we're going to look a little bit at some of the other question types that are available. So the teacher can project this on the screen as well and at any time if you want to actually look at the answers just click here 
and it will show you what the most frequent answers are. And so we can see that the first person, person here has put their answers in. And if another person started answers, then their answers would come off the, on the screen, etc. So you can be collecting answers and you can be showing, projecting onto the screen the answers that different participants are putting in. Now I'm going to show you a few tips in a minute when you use this tool because there are some really useful things that I was shown in my training. But one thing I want to just show you is that when you finish the activity, all you need to do is click on correct answer. It shows then the correct answer and as you notice it says you cannot vote anymore. As soon as you display the correct answers on the screen for the students to see then you don't receive any more questions. So in that particular activity there were, were no correct answers and there was only actually one participant. When I want to exit the game I just click here. Now what I want to do now is I want to actually go through really quickly the process of setting up an event, setting up a question and then I'm going to give you a couple of tips when working with this tool. Now just before I start, one thing to keep in mind, you only can set two questions for each event in WooClap in the free tool. You'd have to pay if you wanted to ask more questions. If you are looking for a similar tool, but you want to ask more questions, then quizzes.com is a really good website because you are not limited to just two questions. You can have 10 or 15 questions, though the question types are more limited. But I'm going to put a link on the screen now to take you to quizzes.com, just in case you want to watch a video about that. We're going to carry on now then and actually create an event, and we're going to make the event quite interesting by using the brainstorming uh, question type. So for me, the strength of this technology is the amount of question types that are available. And remember, in the free tool, you can create an event and set two questions. So you can have two levels of interaction taking place. So we're going to click on My Events. We're going to click on Create an Event. Don't forget to give your event a name. So I'm going to call this TTV Test Event. So I'm just going to put the title in here, TTV Test Event. And don't forget then to click on the button here. Now, once you've saved your event, it's time to start to add your questions. Remember, you can add two questions. Again, look at the range of questions. And I want to show you a couple that I really like. This one is excellent, the brainstorming. It's a way of collecting ideas together. Great for group work as well, if students are working together and brainstorming ideas. And of course, you can do this in the class or do it for homework as well. We're going to click on this one here. And I'm just going to put in a quick question for the students. So I've added my question, it simply says, what technologies do you use in these categories? For presenting webinars, for creating websites, for checking understanding. And we're gonna start this. So we click on start now. When you click on start now, immediately it actually opens up the screen. So immediately the game is ready to start. Remember, you will need to share the link so the students can access this. And remember, when you click here, then you're going to give them the opportunity to uh, either log in using their telephones, smartphones, or again, using the link here, okay, which we're going to do in a minute. We're going to log in. Now, just a little tip. While you've got this screen on open, the activity is not active. You do need to click back to here and now you are allowed to receive answers. So just keep in mind, if you've ever got that open on the screen, then actually the game isn't active. It's only active when you've got this screen open. That was such a useful tip that was provided to me. Now, let's log in again. So I'm just gonna paste in that link as I did last time. Press on enter, we come straight in. And this is really interesting. Look at the way this one works. I was really interested to see this because I hadn't found a tool that did a similar thing. The student can choose the category by just clicking here and saying, okay, for example, what tools do they use for presenting for, presenting for webinars? So I'm gonna put, for example, Zoom and I can enter that one. And then maybe sometimes I use Skype for presenting, so I might want to put that as a possible answer. All these suggestions, and then let's perhaps I'm going to put, for example, Google Meet, because I sometimes use Google Meet as well, okay? So those are my three answers for that particular category. Let's now jump to another category. What about what web tools do I use for making websites? Well, I us usually use WordPress, or sometimes I use Google Sites. 
so I might put that in and now what about the other category so for checking understanding well what top do I use well I often use Mentimeter for quick understanding and I very often use WordWall one of my favorite technologies and in fact uh, because it's such a good one I'm just going to put a video on the screen now in case you want to log into WordWall and learn a little bit more about it now I've just logged back in as uh, the teacher. Look what the teacher receives. They see all the suggestions coming onto the screen and I love this as a technology for brainstorming and I love the way all these categories are laid out. Really great for collecting ideas, great around vocabulary, great around for example, you know, brainstorming for ideas, getting students to work in groups, coming up for ideas for a particular project. Really is a nice idea and really well presented. In this activity, there's no kind of correct answer button or anything like that to see the correct answer because you're just collecting ideas together. So once you finish, just scroll down here and click on exit and the game is over. Really like that tool. I've already started using it um, and I've only really been using WooClap a few days, but uh, I used it straight away in one of my webinars the other day and it's excellent. Now this technology is very similar to another technology called Mentimeter. It does offer more question types than Mentimeter. Uh, there are certain things about Mentimeter that are better. There are certain things about WooClap that are better. But if you want to learn about Mentimeter, I have a very popular video about Mentimeter on the screen now and you can click on it and learn about Mentimeter. Just a super quick break from the video to say, if you like what you're seeing, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos. Look on the front page, you'll see some of the latest and most popular ones. The top 10's a really good section to look at. You can also sign up to my newsletter. You'll get information about all the new videos. You'll also get information about the free webinars I often run looking at different technologies, as well as my courses and my blog. You can always find the courses that are currently open for enrollment on the front page, and the blog is always at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget, of course, that you can sign up to my YouTube channel. Let's get back to the video. Now I just want to focus on a few advanced features or features that I think that is easy to overlook. Um, I'm just going to show you a couple of examples. I've just made a little example here where um, the question is, where are you from? And if I start this activity just so that you see, you can already see that one student clicked here and one student clicked here. This is a really easy one to set up. And um, in fact, it's one of the ones that they provide for you because you can actually use WooClaps that have already been created and simply add them to your collection. And I wanna show you that now because it could be really, really useful. So what we're gonna do now is actually look at making a few WooClaps, but without actually us doing any work at all. So the secret to this, if we just jump back to the actual WooClap activity, I'm gonna create a new event and we're gonna call this create an event. And this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, use, other teachers okay so that's what i'm going to name this one simply because that's what i'm going to do here i'm just going to show you that you can actually create events and then add activities that have already been produced by other people if we click here on example galleries and this is really interesting because it gives you some great examples i'm going to choose here to do english and the topic that i'm going to do is going to be really good idea icebreakers okay so the first one that i'm going to do in my icebreaker is i'm going to choose you can see there's all sorts of questions what's your favorite period of history do you describe yourself in a short tweet um, loads of um, different options here in terms of the way that we can work together and one that i really like is this one here find an image let's just preview it okay and see what students have to do is simply click on the website or click on the image to say where they're from great at the beginning of a presentation if you've got say you're in a conference or you're working with a group of people and it's the first time they met now all I need to do if I want to add this to my actual um, event is simply to click on add and whichever event I'm currently working on at the moment will it will be added so I can click on that and if I go back to my events now you'll notice that my event now has got an activity
Let's add a second activity. So we're going to go back to example galleries and let's look for something else. We've got all different types of question types here, for example. Okay, and let's do a completely different one and we do a matching one because we've not looked at matching. So I'm going to click on matching. We've got now here a whole range one here about muscles, key methodologies. Um, so this one here is word groups and definitions, bones of the body, artwork. Let's so we're going to check out this artwork once we click on it. In fact, we can click here to preview it. And the way that this activity works is simply that we've got to match the uh, artwork with the paintings, with the pictures, with the painters. And we're going to add that to the event. And then what we're going to do now is actually have a look at what that looks like. So if we click now and come back to our event, and we've now added two events, where are you from? And then we've got this match the artwork. Let's have a quick look at how that works. So remember to start, the best thing to do is always to click on this button at the top here, because when you click here, immediately you come into this screen, the students can log on, or of course that you can share the link with them. Once they've done that, then you can start to do the activities. Now remember, the activities don't go live until you click on them. So the first one that's gonna go live is this one. And then once you've given the students enough time to do that one, you would click on that one and then that one would go live. Okay, so let's come back and just out of curiosity, then let's have a quick look at what the students see when they do this particular activity. So what the students, students have to do is to simply match. So they've got here the first one, which I'm guessing is uh, Vincent van Gogh and then the next one is going to be Picasso and the next one I think this is uh, Gustav Glimt and the next one that one there I think I know that because I think that is Henry Rousseau and that one is I guess that it's René Magritte I'm going to submit my answers and those answers have now been submitted. If we go back now and look at what the teacher is receiving, so now you can see that the teacher can even click and see the answers that the first student has give, given, and click back also, remember. And of course, when the teacher's ready, they can then open up the second question. Uh, sorry, no, gotta go back the other way. And now, if we come back to the student view, you'll notice that the student will also now have the option of clicking on the map. So we're now back in the student view and let's say I'm going to say that I'm from Britain so I'm going to simply click and then submit and that's therefore now answered both of those questions the first one where I've chosen the painters and the second one where I've said I'm from and all of that data will come back to the teacher now one other little point about being the student that I haven't picked pointed out and this is a lot to do with my final thing that I'm going to show you and that's just a few settings but here it would be possible even though I've logged in as anonymously if I wanted to submit my name along with those answers um, if you force the students to log in, then of course they will be, have to submit their name anyway because they'll be logged into the system, but you do have that option. So last thing I wanna do is just show you a few settings to keep in mind. Now, as I've said to you, I've only been using this a few days. If you come over here onto the right-hand side, when you're setting up a presentation, there are a few settings that can, can be useful. One of them can be insisting on a username. Um, and then you could stop the results being visible if you want to so that the students can't see the results um, uh, until obviously you decide to make them visible. Um, and you've got a few other settings here that I've not really yet made use of. Um, uh, this confuse button, I presume, if you show the students very clearly at the beginning exactly how to answer the questions, I can't really imagine that you're really going to need that button, but obviously it is there. Um, competition mode, I'm presuming that is to do with um, making it into competition by ranking at the end who was the fastest to answer or who got the most correct answers, etc. So there are a few options there that I have to admit I'm still yet to play with, but that gives you a really good idea of what WooClap can do. Okay, really hope you enjoyed that video. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. As I said, lots more free videos. You can look at any of the sections here at the top of the screen. Great to sign up to my newsletter. If you do, you get updated with all the latest videos. You also get told about the free webinars that I often run as well as the online courses and of course my blog which you can find right at the bottom of the front page and you can also find out on the front page all the information about the current courses that I'm running. Finally if you want to you can of course sign up to my 
YouTube channel and also contact me from the website. I'm gonna put on the screen now a couple more videos of some other technologies that you might find really interesting.